From New York City, this is Before You Commit. Advice you should consider before you commit to a school. I'm your host, Andre Ligai. All right, welcome into another edition of Before You Commit. I am your host, Andre Ligai, and I'm joined by my friend, Jake Brimberg. Hello. Jake, introduce yourself a little bit. I'm Tell Jake us. Brimberg. I went to Stuyvesant High School. I now go to the University of Vermont, where I ski too much and don't play <laughs> enough lacrosse. You know what? Don't play enough lacrosse. That's a cardinal sin. Shame on you, Jake. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, you know what? You can make it up to us by telling us a little bit about, you know, what you do at UVM, you know, your major, you know, part of activities, clubs that you're part of. Uh, well, I don't do much except I am a mechanical engineering major, so that takes up pretty much all of my time. Honestly, I yeah, I pretty much just study and ski when I get the chances. That's about it. Well, how, you know, give me an estimate like per day. How much do you study per day? Obviously, it varies, but standard math homework will take like 45 minutes, and I'm going to be taking a math class until I graduate. After that, there's most of my classes have homework due once a week, so that's like three or four hours of homework per class, depending on the class. Um, so daily, because the the day due dates of the homeworks vary, probably like two to three hours of homework. Then for exams, five or six hours of studying. Mm-hmm. And you know. How do you feel about your school as a whole? You know, do you do you like your experience at UVM? Do you dislike it? Can you tell us why you may like or dislike something? Uh, I do enjoy it. Vermont's a pretty great location. It's beautiful out there or up there, I guess. Um, the the campus is a it has a nice campus. It's a lot of old buildings just with a bunch of more modern buildings, with dormitories. Um, I enjoy it for the most part. The only real downside is that I'm a mechanical engineering major, so I spend a lot of my time working on that and trying to figure out how everything works. Now, you know, regarding the dorms in particular, since we're on that now, you know, for example, one of our friends, Andrew, he's uh, in, <laughs> he's up in Canada, and they have very, very nice dorms from an old uh, hotel that they yeah, renovated. They lucky them. And you know, <laughs> lucky them, but, you know, one being the worst, 10 being the best, how would you rate the dorms at UVM? Well, it varies. I was lucky enough to get into the Honors College, so they have the nicest dorms on campus, doubles, singles, suites, whatever it is. They all have their own private bathrooms and showers, which is amazing, but the rest of the dorms on campus aren't really that great. Mostly just brick buildings with cinder block walls and common bathrooms. Nothing real special. And, you know, about the Honors College, did you get in from day one or did you have to apply for it separately? It's a, you're admitted uh, as part of your application from day one. Okay. So day one. And speaking of day one, you know, can you tell me about your first day on campus? It's kind of nerve wracking. I went in only really knowing one person from Stai, Saroff, and I wasn't really that close with him to start, although like, we've become better friends. But it was pretty nerve wracking. It was just spent kind of trying to learn the campus, learning where all my classes are so that once like I actually get to starting to go to class, I knew where everything was. But other than that, I mostly just kept to myself at the time. I spent a little time with my roommate, got to know him. So day one was just really just getting organized and moving in because I, when you move up the first time, you have honestly more stuff than you really need because you never know what you might need. You figure that out as you go. So it was just a lot of moving in, making my bed, putting my clothes away, stuff like that. Now, you know, let's pretend you're coaching a brand new student, right? You know, a little freshman just came into campus. What sort of activities would you recommend uh, to do? What sort of activities would you recommend to avoid? That's all, to me, that's a lot personal, but as with pretty much any non, like a small liberal arts school, there's pretty much unlimited possibilities on campus as to what you want to do. You could go kayaking. I'd recommend skiing because I personally enjoy it a lot, but that's really up to the person. Um, so that, yeah, the outing club, ski and snowboard club, and then like any club sport you could want, they have really just what you want to do. They ha- they pretty much have everything you could ever want to do extracurricularly. Now, those clubs, are they you know uh, student-funded or do they get some funding from the school itself? They get- oh, they all get... As far as I'm aware, they all get some funding from the school. Obviously, the club teams get a little more because they have to travel and pay for equipment, but I'm sure it varies between 
Right. And you know, since we are on the topic of kind of a new student, what do you feel are the biggest mistakes that new students tend to make, you know, when they're applying or when they're kind of exploring the campus for the first time? Two different things to me. Um, well, when applying, just cover all your bases, cover anywhere you want to go. I'm not sure if it was a mistake or not, but I mostly applied in the Northeast and it would have been good to s- spread out a little bit and at least apply to some places out west, you know, south, maybe mi- Midwest. Um, don't really stick to what you know because you, you probably want to come back to what you know. At least I know I do. I want to live in New York. So if you're going to get that college experience, do it somewhere that you're unfamiliar with or where there's people that you're unfamiliar with. And really like touring the campus, uh, just what you, whatever you're looking for. If you want a campus, like a city campus or more of just like a rural campus where it's just like the campus and maybe a small town nearby, it's really just up to you. I mean, you just got to make do what you have and, you know, be careful in your choices because obviously if you choose a big you know, public school here or a pro- big private school here in New York, you know, you're going to get a very different campus experience than someone, you know, for example, at UVM because the campus is just so different. Absolutely. Now, yeah, another question for you. What do you, and this one's kind of funny. So what do you think is the best purchase you've made, you know, for college? Toaster oven. Toaster. 100% of toaster Tell oven. Tell me why. Tell me why. You can just make all sorts of frozen food in a toaster oven. Depending on the, at UVM, there's late night dining Monday through Wednesday, but the rest of the week you're, well, the rest of the week you're shit out of luck as far as late night food, unless you want to go off campus and buy something. So going to Walmart or Costco and picking up a bunch of frozen food, being able to make in the toaster oven is fantastic. And the toaster oven is allowed in the rooms? No. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> we learned a little something today. But it's easy to hide, so. Fair enough. You know, uh, now that we are talking about rules and what's allowed and what's not allowed, what do you think is the most annoying school policy or campus policy that you've had to deal with so no far? No toaster ovens. <laughs> no toaster ovens. There's Probably that. The rest of them, like I have gotten in trouble a couple of times and completely warranted. Like I was doing stupid well, shit. you know, it happens to the, the best it's of not, us. It's not like... Yeah, like they, they have regular rules. They are pretty harsh in their disciplinary committees. And like the res- the RAs are very strict, depending on where you live. Mm-hmm. Now, is there a, a strike system or, of sorts or, you know, one time and you're done? It's not one one and done. Um, as far as I know, two in your own pro- probation, three and you're probably considered for dismissal, but I'm not really sure. Mm-hmm. Now, I'd like to ask you another question. When you were enrolling for your classes, when you were selecting things, you know, how easy or how difficult was that process for you? And, you know, does the school offer priority for certain students over others, you know, like seniors and juniors or honors kids? Tell me a little bit about that. As far as seniors, juniors, whatever, the seniors obviously get to register first. And then it goes juniors, sophomores, freshmen. Um, it was pretty easy going in just because they set up computers and you could talk to someone about the class you wanted to take and they'd walk you through the process of registering for those classes. Um, at UVM, the structured majors, so like mechanical engineering, biochem, anything that like you have to take this class, you won't be able to continue. They're given priority as well as the honors students are given a half hour priority. Now, uh, since we're talking about classes and you know what classes you have to take, you know, do you guys do required classes or a, a, a sort of core for your students to take, or does everyone kind of get to individualize their experience completely? Sort of. There's essentially, depending on what major you are, there's a few requirements. If you're in the College of Arts and Sciences, I believe you have to take a year of a language as well as a writing class. And university, I'm not sure about the rest of them. For engineering, you don't have to take a writing class. Actually, I'm not too sure about that. I might want to fill with the honors college classes. But. As far as the rest of it, you have to take a D1 and D2, which are both diversity classes. I don't really know what the difference is, and as well as the sustainability requirements. So something about the environment or along those, something along those lines. Okay, fair enough. And you know, out of the required classes that you've had to take, whether it's for your major or for the school overall, what do you feel is the most annoying class you've had to take? And tell me why. Because I was in honors college, I required to take four honors college classes, and one of those was a religion class, which is just teacher and I didn't get along. I'm not much of a writer, so that was probably the most annoying class I had to take. The rest of them weren't too bad. My sustainability was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I have another question. And what sort of students do you think will succeed at this campus? What sort of traits do they need to have or what sort of things do they need to be aware of to succeed? Pretty much the same as any other school. You got to be, if you're not going to, 
well, obviously try to manage your time well or do manage your time well. Uh, prior, basically, like, prioritize things. On a given day, like, do what's due first. And then, if you have time, get on to things that are due a little later, but that are very important. So, like, studying for an exam or writing an essay. It's pretty much the same as, for, to me, it's pretty much the same as someone who would succeed at any other school. Just manage your time well. Study efficiently. If you're not learning in class, make sure that you're learning outside of class on your own. Otherwise, you'll just be fucked for the exam. And, you know, it's a big transition for a lot of kids from high school to college where, you know, people don't hold your hand anymore. And do you feel that, you know, there are resources in, in case a student's kind of confused or they don't know what to do? Do you feel that there are enough resources on campus to help such a student? Absolutely. Um, I think that's the case with almost any college you go to. It's just instead of instead of someone come stepping in and being like, hey, do you need help? You have to go out and seek that help yourself. So you'd have to sign up for tutoring or whatever else you might need. Now, what things do you feel that UVM does really well or conversely does really poorly? And you know, tell me, give me a little bit of context behind that. UVM, they... They structure their classes, but like they they do a good job of making it clear what you have to take if you're in a structured major. Like there are people that you can go to to talk to about that online. You can find a rubric of for me mechanical in mechanical engineering. There's a rubric online of every class you're gonna have to take, as well as a, a sort of layout of when you're gonna have to take it, and like what how much free space you have to take an elective if you want to. So they do that pretty well. And what do they do poorly? Tell you what, let's move. Let's move to a different question. Maybe you can yeah, sure refresh your memory a little bit. I mean, this is pretty much the same as any other school. They don't have a ton of funding, so there aren't like great school-run extracurricular events. But that's made up for by clubs. So mm-hmm. now, tell me a little bit of, of information about dining halls or just food on or near uh, campus. Tell me about that. <laughs> if you go to a school that has Sodexo, the food is gonna be shit, guaranteed. At least that's like there's a cut. There's Four dining halls on campus. I've been to three of them. One of them is on a campus that's very far from where I live, so there's no real reason to go there. The one on the central campus is pretty good. It's brand new. It was just opened this past year. They have... It varies. They, pretty much any dining hall you go to is going to have burgers and fries, pasta, and then after that, it varies. Sometimes there's meat lasagna. Sometimes there's steak. Sometimes it really can vary. Um, the Harris Millis dining hall, the one on athletic campus, is pretty bad it was worse this year than last year they seemed to have fewer options and one of the stations was closed almost always but they always have pasta and pizza and burgers carbs carbs and carbs yes, and sir. just a little bit of protein yes sir and there's another one called simpson where they have this buzzer system so that's usually where you can get the best food that was my favorite dining hall but i don't go there very often because it's not too close but they have buzzers where you can get like any given number of things depends on the day mm-hmm. and what about places not necessarily on campus but near campus well so there's two that everyone knows and those are wings over in uh kkd which is the country card deli both because they're open till like 3 a.m so when you'd want to get food off campus that's where you'd go uh wings over obviously a wings place not too far they deliver till one on weekdays and three on weekends and the country card deli is downtown 30 minute walk ish although if you have a car obviously drive because that's faster and they make like breakfast sandwiches and hot dogs stuff like that until like three in the morning as well mm-hmm. and now you know regarding food or you know academics just anything from your school what sort of changes would you like to see from uvm get rid of sodexo probably just because the food is terrible and it discouraged, not completely discouraged me from eating, but like I was less inclined to eat because there's something I really wanted. It just and, got really repetitive. Um, could you repeat that? Sodexo? Is that Sodexo. What you Sodexo. Could yeah. you tell me a little bit more about that? Because I personally don't know anything about it. I have no it. idea other than they're the, they're the company that, that provides the food. Mm, so the school has a deal with them? Yeah. Then. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, no other contractors. That's yes, Brooklyn College has something similar, and yeah, the food is can can be subpar, but ultimately they have a deal, and yeah, you know, they have to meet because there there's a contract, right? Now, uh, what is one life hack that you can offer just around campus? You know, what the students can do to make their lives a little easier. There is a tunnel underneath Main Street, which means you can avoid the light and keep yourself warm in the winter. That's pretty much that's the biggest thing. 
walking between campuses. Now, how bad do the winters get since you're further up? Eh, pretty bad. Some of them. <laughs> Last year, it was a lot colder than this year. Can't explain why. There were some, there were a couple times and it was zero, like zero degrees. Last year, it was zero degrees during all the finals week, which was not enjoyable. This year, stayed in the 10s or 20s. As long as you bundle up, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Now, could you give me an idea of, especially since you're doing mechanical engineering, could you give me an idea of the general schedule that you have for your classes? It varies. The classes, the earliest they can start is 8, although most start at 8.30. And as far as I know, they can go till 8 p.m. as well. You're not usually going to have more than five classes in a day, and that's a pretty heavy schedule. If you spread it out right, you'll have two or three each day. And the classes on Mondays are Monday, Wednesday, Fridays are 50 minutes long, and Tuesday, Thursdays are an hour 15. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that sort of schedule... Is, does it apply for every single you know student in mechanical engineering? Does the, do classes range for all students there, or seniors get the late classes, or freshmen get the early classes? As far as I know, it really just depends on the class. It's not really given priority to any given year. I mean, I'm sure to some extent it is, just because you know sophomore engineers all take the same classes. But as far as I know, seniors don't get the later classes. I have friends who past freshmen had like a 4:30 class. I had a couple of 830s. Now, on to another question. What do you think is the most significant change that you've made since entering the school in your freshman year? Hmm. So, like, my personal lifestyle? Personal lifestyle, you know, studying, anything like that. I mean, the biggest thing was just having to wake up, like, fully on my own. I had a safety net before of my mother, just in case I didn't wake up. So, it's really, like, you got to get yourself to class. You got to do a lot of stuff on your own. And yeah, you know, I, just I think more independent for sure, for sure. And I think for a lot of people, you know, a lot of kids in high school maybe have not done their own laundry before. And yeah, it's yeah, that it's, as well. I didn't it's think a learning about that. process. Yeah, it's not even too difficult. You just it's just kind of a pain to do. You got to lug all your laundry to the laundry room. Of course. And by the way, kids don't don't eat Tide Pods, please. No, no, it's no don't good. No good. Now, I do have another question for you. What do you think is the worst decision you've made so far in your school career at UVM? Getting caught, sort of. It's not really a decision. It was just me doing dumb shit. So that was probably the worst like thing I've done. I brought wrath from my parents as well as the school and a fine. So I was broke for a little while. But I mean, there are, ultimately there are consequences to anything of you course. do and just have to be responsible with your action and own up to it at the same yeah, time because if you, if you get caught doing something bad you know don't lie about it no just be honest with it mm -hmm. and yeah you know, i think that's a valuable lesson but what do you think maybe per, perhaps it's that what do you think is the most valuable lesson you've learned so far from uvm kind of when to get help like if you see yourself failing in something literally or like you know doing a lot worse than you would have hoped go get help just go get help it's not gonna no one's going to judge you for getting a tutor. Yeah. And hell, the tutors are always happy to help you. Actually, myself, uh, I'm a writing tutor at, you know, I was a writing tutor at Brooklyn College. And you know, if someone asks for help, you know, I'm, I'm, ex I'm ecstatic. I'm like, so excited to yeah, help them out. Yeah, are absolutely happy to help. Yeah. And, so they're there for. And do you think that is difficult, as a difficult concept for a lot of students learning how to ask for help and kind of, you know, taking that punch as maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was at you know, subject X, Y, Z. Definitely. It was for me, but you know, you got to do what you got to do in order to succeed. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to ask a question in, in a different vein, you know, given your particular financial situation, and you don't necessarily have to disclose all the details. That's fine. Do you think that UVM is worth it for you? Yes and no. Money-wise, I don't know. I'm getting a pretty good education. No real complaints. So like it's like, it was really up to me, like, where I went. So, like, yeah, it was worth it for me because that's what I chose. So, you got to accept that to start. But given another option, had I done a little better, probably wouldn't be a UVM, though. Now, does your school experience, you know, what you've had so far, does it kind of match the expectations you've had coming in? Pretty much. I'm not really sure what I went into college expecting. I mean, you don't necessarily have to know. It's yeah. it's, a, it's ultimately a big learning process for everyone. Yeah. I mean, I pretty much matched what I expected from college. You know, you're doing a lot of stuff on your own. Classes are 
harder but less often. You have a lot of free time. And it's really easy to procrastinate. Kind of what I expected. Yeah, and you know, procrastination can be such a difficult thing to break out of. And yeah, you know, there are there are ultimately not as many safety nets for you in your environment at college just because you know, as you mentioned, if you're kind of slacking off a little bit at home, you know, there's mom, there's dad, there's family. They can kind of help you out. They can make sure you're doing the right thing. But at college, no one's going to hold your hand like that. And it is, it is a big difference for a lot of people to adjust to. Absolutely. Now, in terms of adjustment, I want to ask, how long did it take you until you really felt comfortable or at home on campus? And, you know, perhaps you don't. And could you tell me about that? About a month. Just once I pretty much once you get a footy and you know where everything is, you're going to feel comfortable. Not necessarily at home. I feel pretty at home. You just got to get a good group of friends that you can hang out with. And then you feel at home because you have, you have things to do. You have people to hang out with. But comfortable, not really that long. As soon as you know where everything is and where you got to be, it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, earlier you mentioned kind of applying yourself differently or ha having, you know, maybe you had done more in an earlier time, you would be at a different school. But, you know, what is one thing that you really wish you had done back in high school to really prepare yourself for college? Less procrastination. Pretty much it. And yeah, um... You know, Jake and I went to the same high school where procrastination can't be the death of you just because it is a competitive environment in which, you know, things can stack up so quickly, so many assignments. And it, if you don't have necessarily have that experience in your high school, that college will be teaching you a lesson about managing your time wisely at the end of the day. I'd like to ask you, do you feel that your education so far has changed the way you think or just approach da daily life things? I mean, to some extent. I just kind of like look at things from more of an engineering perspective. So like something here and there, I'll be like, oh, like this is the, f like the physics behind that just because I've learned so much about it. That's pretty much it. So rather than, hey, this does this for me, ra uh, rather it's more of a, yeah, how does this do that? Mm -hmm, pretty much. And you know, do you do you find yourself kind of walking along the streets like, oh, I know exactly how this works? Yeah, sometimes. Okay, fair. Now, I would like to, and I think this is the most important question that I have. Uh, would you recommend this school to someone younger, perhaps a younger you? You know, given that power of hindsight, do you do you feel that you know this experience is worth it for you? It's tough to answer just because obviously I don't really have any experience at another school, but yeah, I think it is worth it for me. It's really, it depends on what you're going into, what you're trying to major in, because there's different schools that are really good in different things, and UVM's pretty good in engineering. Now, can you tell me about the different schools at UVM? How many different uh, undergraduate divisions do they have? Do you... Six, five, something like that. I can, I can I'm, I'm going to try to list them off. There's an environmental school, College of Arts and Sciences, engineering, business, engineering also includes math. Uh... There's a nursing school, and that's as many as I can remember. There may be more. I'm not 100% sure. Another question that I feel is important is, do you feel that it's, is it harder to get into the school, or is it harder to actually succeed, you know, get out? I mean, I don't, I don't know how hard it is really to get in. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's probably harder to succeed, because... I know I have tons of friends who were like, yeah, high school was so easy and now I'm doing like all this like super hard and college all this stuff. So it's probably harder to succeed just because, you know, you don't have time and like it's not like high school. You're not doing your work in school. Like you have when you're at home, or not when you're at home, but when you're in your dorm, there's tons of stuff you can do. There's could be a PlayStation or you watch YouTube when you should be doing work. So it's a little harder to get stuff done. It's, it seems to me, I, I think I've always categorized it as the tyranny of freedom or the tyranny of choice where, you know, you have so many choices that you don't know what to do. And sometimes, you know, when you're not being spoon fed, when you're not being, you know, guided into the right path, you make a choice that may not be the wisest for you. And you know, too many freedoms can sometimes, I guess, hurt you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Now, regarding friends and making new friends and kind of keeping up with old you know, what sort of advice would you give to people regarding, let's say, old friends from high school, keeping up with them or kind of adjusting to, you know, being such a distance away from everybody? So, hold on to your roots. If you, even if you don't talk to people too often when you're at school, 
hit them up when you're at home and just catch up. Especially if they were good friends, you were good friends with them in high school. Don't lose touch with your friends from high school. And while in college, it's not hard to because to keep touch with your friends from school, especially now with like all these group chats, Snapchat group chats, Facebook group chats, whatever. Um, you can keep touch with your college friends, and you're you're going back to see them. So that's not really the trouble. You should it's focus more, not focus more, but it's. It's easier to let your high school relationships slip away. Yeah, and I mean, you'll make sure that doesn't happen. You have to put in work into that sort of relationship because if you don't maintain it, it's not going to maintain itself. It takes Mm -hmm. consistent effort from both parties. Mm -hmm. You know, now that we are on the topic of relationships, if you don't mind me asking, how, yeah, I know that you are in a long distance relationship right now, and how do you, you know, how do you work with that? How do you make it, make it happen? How do you make it succeed? It's tough. And you obviously miss your significant other, but. You know, if you guys, they really like, if you guys are both okay with it, then it's pretty easy to make. It's, it's tough, but it's not too hard to make it work. You can FaceTime there so you can see like the other person's face, like talk to them. The only thing you're missing is actual physical presence and it's not too bad. And, you know, sometimes if, if things line up, you can you know, make plans to see each other. Exactly. Let's say someone has a common break with each other. Mm-hmm. And um, you'll... Usually, I mean, if not, if no other time, you'll definitely see them during summer and winter break. Mm-hmm. And probably Thanksgiving. Now, do you feel that, you know, that long distance relationship, do you feel that you still have the freedoms of, you know, being who you want to be, doing what you want to do? Because sometimes people, you know, they admit they, they feel a little bogged down by a long distance relationship here that they can't necessarily do what they want to do. They, they think a little bit differently. How do you feel? I mean, as long as you're not like a fuckboy and cheat on someone, it's not to I me. Mean, it's just as long as you keep pretty constant contact, send messages back, you can do it. You can do what you want to do with your friends and still talk to that person. Yeah. And, you know, the, the reason I ask that is just because sometimes people, they, I guess, I, at times they feel guilty for not spending enough time on, you know, their significant other. Oh, you know, I felt bad. You know, I was out with my friend instead of, you know, FaceTiming you instead of messaging you. Do you ever encounter that? Or are you and your significant other just okay with, you know, having your free time to each other? I mean, we're both doing, we're both pretty busy. So we both have friends that we hang out with a lot. So you can still keep contact. I mean, you don't always have to be FaceTiming. The message is enough to just check in on like, what's going on with the other person. Most of the time, unless something like real bad happens or you really need to talk. In which case, like, yeah, I have like, several people. I'm A lot of my friends are in long-distance relationships, and we've all like, stopped what we were doing, gone and talked to the other person, like the, our significant other, because something was going on. But like, that's all you got to deal with. You, Personally, like she does her thing when she's at school, and I'm still talking to her anyway. And we're both doing stuff on weekends. Yeah, and yeah, it's it's good that you don't necessarily have to change your priorities entirely just to you know adjust to that person. Yeah, it's it's okay to not necessarily talk all the time and just kind of have space for your particular activities because you know your significant other is at a very different campus. You guys do very different things, but you can still at least carve out a niche sort of time for each other. And, you know, I, I respect that. That's very commendable because how I, I myself know it's long distance is hard. It is Absolutely. not an easy process. And, uh, you know, uh, we've, we mentioned it on another pod, but you know, there ultimately is no shame if you can't make it work. You know, it's, it's a learning mm-hmm. experience at the end of the day. Now I'd like to ask you another question and, you know, Regarding your education and your career, what sort of goals are you trying to achieve or what sort of career are you trying to build with this education that you're getting? Basically, I want to go into engineering for a few years, get some solid experience, and then go into something that makes a little more money because these days, engineering isn't where the money is. Maybe like 50 years ago, engineering was absolutely where the money was, but now it's gone, obviously, the ways of computers and stuff, so... I want to go towards something that can help me make a little more money and support the lifestyle that I want and being able to live in New York because that's difficult. Yeah, New York rent is not a joke by no. any means. It is, you know, the, of course the joke goes around that the the rent is too damn high, but... It is. It is, it is. And, you know, 
having experienced New York, having lived here, both you and me, it's it's hard to give give up that sort of idea, you know? That yeah, there's no place like it, at least not in the U.S., really. Yeah, I mean, it might, it might be smelly, it might be dirty, but it's New York. You know, Absolutely. You can't, can't really replicate that. Now, let's talk about something a little bit more lighthearted. Uh, I do remember oh, catching the scores between a uh, lacrosse game, I think, between UVM and uh, U Albany, And, you know, that... You got trounced. <laughs> well, they, they may have gotten uh, beat. They may have been defeated. But I'd like you to tell me, how, do you, how big are sports in your school? You know, is there a school spirit about that? Yeah, there's plenty of school spirit. They're not crazy. I mean, our basketball team is really good in our division, so they have a lot of support, and our hockey team is our biggest team. It's the closest we have to, like, tons of people from all over Burlington, the Burlington area come to watch the games because it's the biggest sport. And when they're good, they get tons of support. Student sections go crazy, and when they're not as good, the same thing. But it's less like, oh, like, we're ranked 15. Like, that's really cool. And, you know, it's just like, oh, like, we weren't too good this year. Hopefully next year. But at the same time, it's not the crazies that can be experienced at, let's say, UNC or Duke no, for basketball. No, not at all. I mean, there's plenty of school spirit, but it's not always surrounding sports. Now, do you feel that there there really is a sense of community at your campus just because it is a, you know, a more enclosed campus? It's not necessarily a commuter school. How do you feel about that? Yeah, there's definitely a sense of community. It's mostly, I mean, it's more just like, oh, you live, where do you live? I live here. And like, oh, yeah, I know people that live there. Do you know this person, this person? There's definitely a sense of community. Now, what do you feel that the school has really given you in terms of, you know, it could be knowledge, it could be just general lifestyle things about yourself, that maybe something you learned about yourself? Snow. Snow? They've given me snow. I mean, obviously tons of knowledge in engineering just because that's what I'm majoring in. But like the biggest thing location-wise is just I love to ski and I'm now able to ski tons of weekends as long as I don't have schoolwork that stops me. And, you know, how, how close is the nearest or uh, ski location to campus? Under an hour. Wow. My man, you get to ski all the time, don't you? Yeah, I skied 15 plus times this year. Very nice. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> Color me impressed. Now, you know, let's, let's shift from sports and, you know, recreational activities to academia. What do you think is the most interesting sort of class assignment or class book that you've had to go work through? Hmm. I mean, everyone, when I, the year I came in, was required to read The Sixth Extinction, which was pretty interesting. It just talked about, it was about all the extinction events that the Earth has, like, gone through, and talked about, like, you know, figures, like, all this, like, the Earth is not overpopulated, but getting there, and it's getting warmer, so it was just talking about stuff like that. It was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And on another note, th this question is also a, a bit different. Um, what do you think is your go-to song when you're kind of walking around campus, you're doing work? What is that, that one song that does it for you? Hmm. Second. <laughs> it really varies. It depends on what... I listen to a lot of rap, so it depends on what's come out as of late most of the time. So do you try to keep up with the... I listen to a lot of Kendrick this past year. So I no. a lot of Kendrick at school. Quick quick question about that. Are we talking damn Kendrick to Pimp a Butterfly? Yeah, good kid, Matt Everything. City? Everything. A lot of Pimp a Butterfly, but very varies from all, all over the place. Section 80 as well. Well, see, now that we are on the top of Kendrick Lamar, which which album do you think really was your top to Pimp top dog? To Pimp a Butterfly, probably. To, to Pimp a Butterfly. Or good kid, Matt City. Well, can you kind of explain your to rationale behind that? To Pimp a Butterfly is just, it flows so well song to song. And it's a really easy album to listen to all the way through. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely agree with you there. I think it's hard to really skip a track. They all just, you know, it works. Absolutely. It's cohesive. It's a, it, te it tells an interesting story that I think you and I, it would be very difficult for people like you and myself to experience. And yeah, there is a value in that and it's also made beautifully just because you know your music may have a great message but if your music is crap your music is still crap absolutely <laughs> absolutely very good now jake before we end our segment i would ask you to you know impart some pearls of wisdom upon our listeners what do you got it's all about time management just get your shit done early that gives you plenty of time to have free time at night which is when you want it anyway you don't want to 
fuck around during the daytime and then have to work at night because that's just less fun. It's a lot more freeing to do your work earlier and spend your time later in the day watching TV or hang out with friends or whatever because working until you fall asleep sucks. That's the biggest thing. And then don't drink too much, don't smoke too much weed, all that stuff. Just control yourself so you can still be effective at school and have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess on time, on target, right? Yes, sir. All right. Well, Jake, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, And, you know, guys, tune in for another episode sometime soon.